Welcome back to the Southern Scene. It's time now for our legal scene. And today we're continuing to take a look at gun violence. With the recent shootings across the nation and even our own backyard, gun violence continues to plague our society and it continues to be in the minds of us all and in the news. And you know, when we think about it, can the civil justice system do anything to help this issue? Well, we decided to take that question to our legal expert, Mark Tate of Tate Law Group. Mark joins us now. So let me ask you, can, is there anything that the civil justice system can do to help out this issue? Um, it's an interesting issue. You know, we're concerned about the Second Amendment and everybody talks about, you know, the Second Amendment is under attack by the President of the United States and it's not really true. And it seems like a, a very uh, straw man argument to make that the President wants to take away your guns. I, I'm going to tell you. Uh, Barack Obama does not want to take your guns. What we're actually talking about is accountability for your actions. And that should be really the touchstone uh, of every American. And that is when you do something, you're accountable. And I don't think that we should differentiate between an individual's actions and a company's actions. And so the way that we can address and the way that we can commence to diminish uh, gun violence is to hold the makers of cheap guns and high capacity magazines accountable when their products are used to harm others. What's the current law when you're talking about the yeah. liability when, you know, in Georgia where mm -hmm. gun makers are concerned? You know, we had an interesting um, change in the sentiment towards consumers in Georgia uh, under Sonny Perdue and, and immediately before him the insurance industry and other big players in industry started to exert some pressure and we saw changes. And so one of the things that we see change... But Georgia is a more lenient state when, when it comes to guns, right? You can carry them, absolutely. And, and, and we all support that. We all support, you know, owning guns. We all support owning uh, and having the right to carry a concealed weapon. Uh, it's interesting, Natalie, the most of the young women who work for me in my office have concealed carry permits. And, and we're not anti-gun. The point is, is that if you are a company who manufactures products that can cause injury and in fact will kill you when you use them as intended, you ought to be held accountable. And the law in Georgia right now is that all gun manufacturers are absolutely immune from suit. And we think that's wrong. And we think that instead the law should be if you are a manufacturer of a gun that can be used and is in fact used. Uh, in uh, a mass murder, you ought to be held fully accountable to the victims of that yeah, mass but, murder. Yeah, but Mark, how would, you know, I mean, when you're talking about gun makers and, uh, I mean, maybe the gun maker didn't know that that person was going to go out and uh, shoot up a, a mm. bunch of people. So yeah. why would you think that they should be held accountable? Yeah, well, it's an interesting question. Why should they? Well, you know, in uh, most hunting environments, even in the, in the high volume dove kills in Argentina, you're not using high capacity magazines. You know, you're, you get 2,000 rounds a day to go shoot these birds. So uh, there's not really any other purpose other than killing people uh, for a high capacity magazine. When the product is used as intended, it will kill you. And there are very few products in that category. One is uh, assault weapons and uh, high capacity magazines, and the other is tobacco. Well, our lawmakers are busy right now. Do you think we'll see the uh, gun laws change? Yeah. Um, we see, I think, uh, a, a, a time of outrage right now. Uh, it's sort of a national crisis when it comes to gun violence. Uh, not just the mass murderers, but even in, you know, even here in Savannah, in Chicago, and in Philadelphia. Uh, handgun violence is, is, is spiraling out of control and more people are killed uh, now by gun violence than medical malpractice and we're coming pretty close to the number of people who were killed in car wrecks. Well, you're right about that because uh, it seems like a week doesn't go by, by that we don't hear yeah. about some shooting somewhere. Well, I think something's going to happen and I think that... And by that you mean more strict laws. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're going to see uh, presidential constitutional executive orders uh, that make it so the United States Department of Justice takes the actions that it can. 
uh, to diminish uh, access to high capacity magazines and assault weapons. All right, the, uh, this is veering off the topic a little bit, but we had a little, a few questions uh, regarding guns that that came in that we wanted to talk to you about. Uh, first off, if you're a gun owner, I didn't know about these questions. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> this is weird, but we spring these on you, All but right. you know. Um, but if you're a gun owner and say you have an intruder in your home, and you take your gun and you shoot, and that particular intruder ends up dying on your property, in your house, or are you held accountable for, for the death of that person? No. Somebody comes in your house, you have a gun, they threaten you, you can kill them. Hands down? Yes. But what if they're, what if they intruded, you know, they were an intruder on your home, mm -hmm. and then they took off running, and they're off your property, and you kill them? Well, that's a little bit different. Uh, you may have some answers. Uh, you have to supply some answers to law enforcement. For the most part, if somebody breaks in your house and you're armed and somebody's coming into your house, you don't know what they're going to do. You can kill them. Okay, so the second question that we have for you is regarding um, accidental gun deaths. Yeah. You know, I mean, we hear about hunting accidents or, mm -hmm. or heaven forbid, a child getting their hands mm -hmm. on a gun. What can be done in, in, in that type of situation oh. when a death occurs? Yeah, the, well, that's a negligence question. There's clearly no criminal intent. Um, when, a, when a parent leaves a gun laying around and a child picks it up and shoots himself or shoots someone else, uh, there could be liability for that negligence. But again, that's a negligence standard. Well, with the gun violence issue, I mean, obviously, this is at the forefront, a lot of agendas. Um, so I want to give you a final word where this is concerned. So um, what would you say to our viewers out there regarding this issue? Well, you know, it, it's interesting, Natalie. My, my point of view is from that of a civil uh, trial lawyer, and I want to represent people who've been hurt because somebody else did something wrong. And, you know, I, I think that people who are victims of gun violence uh, need to rely, hopefully, uh, first on the police to bring the people to justice who committed the violent act against them. But there's a whole other component, and it very well may be that there is civil liability uh, where a property owner uh, or a gun manufacturer perhaps may have responsibility, and I would love to talk to those people about exploring the civil liability that may be there for their injuries. Okay, well, thanks, Mark, for joining us. Some great information there. There. And that's going to wrap it up for our legal scene today. If you have questions for Mark regarding this issue or any other legal issue, all you have to do is go to our website page, send us a message, or go to our Facebook page. We'll find out all those answers for you. Don't go away. We'll be back with more of the Southern Scene right after this.